I cannot believe my luck today. I think this happens all the time. Whenever I, I arrive back on the Sabi Sand, I do get an incredible welcome. And perhaps if some of you go back and look at your screenshots while you're trying to identify a bird, you may have also seen a leopard at the back, which we, not we, I did none of it, Senzel discovered. And it is Mr. Tingana, who's also just soared for us. It's been a long time since I have heard the sound of a leopard. How crazy. I mean, I'm just taking a moment here to realize how spoiled I am in the Sabi sand. Like, I honestly cannot believe that that's that this whole thing, that this has just happened. This is not real. I can't believe it. Everybody, if you want to come on a safari holiday, come to the Sabi sand. It's magnificent, and especially at this time of the year, because it's just wonderful. Hello, my old friend. Goodness, it's been a long time. I'm even going to look at him with my binoculars, just because he's so beautiful. And like we always say, it's always incredible. And to look at things through your binoculars is something you should always bring with you. That's so cool. Hello, beautiful boy. So, unusual that he was soaring at this time of the day. I mean, typically you'll see leopards more active sort of at dusk and dawn. And they're quite vocal right through the evenings and into the early mornings. But maybe with all this unusual activity around and when I say unusual activity because it's not normal to have so many leopards together in, in such close proximity obviously we always talk about the density of leopards in the Sabi sand being you know phenomenal and, and the best in the country and they live you know fairly close to one another but to be just within a couple of meters you know in the same sighting essentially on a regular basis I mean there's very few books that write about this in fact I've I mean I've really yet to read about the situation that's been going on at the moment so I think we're very very luck lucky to be witnessing all of this because I certainly haven't seen it and I don't think many others have seen it too but that's great news for us so typical in you know old man Tangana fashion just resting up in the shade he's gonna have to move soon because as the Sun starts to set towards the west you can see look how much of his body is now coming into contact with the Sun and it's not I mean it's not a hot day but it's definitely warm and maybe with him soaring like that maybe he's going to get up a little bit earlier perhaps it's going to get cooler it'll probably be the coldest evening ever in the Sabi sand because I'm wearing shorts and I only bought a little jersey so that's most likely what's going to happen but that is awesome I didn't even see him there I was still busy trying to faff and and, and look at that bird I couldn't. E I didn't even see what it was. Maybe it was a fire finch of sorts. Kill six. Yes, he does have quite a, a round belly. Well spotted. Um, I, I don't know when he last ate. Of course, um, it's going to take me some time to um, figure out everything. Senzo, do you remember when Tingana last ate? Ooh, haven't seen him with a kill. Senzo shakes his head. In, in Kirsty, in in FC, has just said exactly the same thing. Okay, so. Perhaps he's just caught something small. Maybe he has been on a kill. He's just had it stashed away somewhere. Remember, leopards typically are secretive creatures. Um, although I find it interesting because it's very difficult to hide anything away at the moment. I have forgotten how open the Sabi sand can actually be in, in the winter months. What do you think? We'll have another look at him here and then maybe we'll go around and we'll park on the other side of the damn wall in, in a little while. It looks like he's really unimpressed with what I've got to say about him. Well, you're looking good. You definitely. It was amazing to watch that comeback. It was something that I also still can't get over, and I'll remember forever. Watching the fear in his eyes as he used to hear Hukumuri saw. And for those of you who are uncertain as to who Hukumuri is, because I don't know when he was last sort of seen around, he was um, a, a new male that moved into the area, but it seems to have stuck to the west. sound is so cool and we're so close to him that when he does soar the vehicle vibrates slightly too so I literally can feel it through my feet as soon as he did that first rasp it's like I didn't even hear it I felt it I've got goosebumps wow that is an amazing sound I mean we're really spoiled in the morrow we are really spoiled in the morrow every night you go to bed hearing lions 
hearing the hyenas, the zebra outside the tent, the elephants moving around down below. But the sound of a leopard soaring is not something that you hear very often. But all good signs, rasping, yawning, head up, looking around. What's your next move, Tingana? Maybe with that full belly, he will want to come down and have a drink. It'll be interesting. We'll keep an eye on If we do bushwalk around here, we'll definitely go looking around and, um, and we'll sort of see if we can find any of the, you know, remains of a carcass. Maybe it was something small, just like a daker or a steenbok. They are really vulnerable at the moment. And with it being so open, there's not much for them to hide away in, which is, well, unfortunate for them. That's fantastic. Okay, well, we're definitely not going to go anywhere, but the next time you come back to us, I will reposition and hopefully we'll be closer to Tingana. But off you go to David with the lions. Nope, we're not going anywhere. Staying with them because of that beautiful soaring sound. Shall we do that? Let's quickly reposition, Senzo. Let's stay with me. Let's see if we can get another view. We're on the other side of the dam and... Um, I mean, it's quite nice, you can stay here, but Tengana's a, a really relaxed leopard. He never used to be, but he's obviously settled down in his age, and ever since I've been here in the north, he's always been the most incredible leopard. So, I'm happy if we approach a little bit closer. We won't get too close. Oh, he's actually... He... Nope. Sneaky cat. This is an old man. He's got many tricks here. He's going to come for a drink. Thank you for doing what I said, Tingana. That is great. You make me look like such a superb field guide. <laughs> it's all about luck, I'm telling you. Oh, amazing. So, James, I am currently sitting at Treehouse Dam. So, I'm sort of, I'm south of where the dam cam is situated at Voyatella Dam. Um, so, it's, it's actually not far as the crow flies. Hmm. I don't know, maybe a mile away, maybe just over a mile. So if you know, if, if, if it was James going for a run, he would do it in about 10 seconds. That's how close, it's not that close, but James runs really fast. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so he might end up going that way. Again, it's, um, it's been quite, it's always difficult when you come back to an area and you haven't been seeing the animals constantly. You've got to try and remember what is actually going on and what the animals' patterns are. Look at that, it's like we're in a desert. It's so dry. I mean, it's such an incredible contrast from summer to winter here on the Sabi sand. Whereas in Kenya, in the Mara, I mean, yes, it does change. The grass obviously goes from taller than the top of your head. It, it gets um, cut down quite a bit from animals trampling it to animals feeding. And then of course it just sort of changes color. So it goes from the beautiful vibrant colors of green to sort of the more harsh winter tones of browns and yellows but other than that it doesn't do this dramatic change like it does here in the sabi sand and i think that's another exciting thing and another appeal about the sabi sand is that you, you can come for various things <laughs> i believe not all of you are having a good chuckle saying that tingana is uh, saying welcome back taylor we'll, we'll see if he saw us again no i won't ruin it a sawing moment but very very thirsty and you can drink lots and lots of water especially after a big meal I mean they're not like you and I that every time we are thirsty we just have a little bit of a drink whenever we need to you know they might only drink once a day sometimes they might not even go there without drinking if they've had a big feast and water is a fair distance away just lapping it all up okay for reals now we are going to send you back to the Mara to see what David and his wonderful lions are getting up to and hopefully they'll be just as cool as Tingana <laughs>